Good morning. Welcome to the Marion County Board of Commissioners meeting. It's Wednesday, May 27th, 2015. Thank you. <laughs> I can't even know what year it is. We're in the uh, Senator hearing room here at Courthouse Square, and we will begin our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day, and we were talking right before it started about remembering what the date is and remembering where we were, and then I forgot the year, but that's all right. So uh, the first item of business is a presentation, and I think this is the other half of our presentation that we did last week. Is that correct? That's correct. And so John Latimer has the Customer Service Award to the Justice Court staff, and uh, we have Nancy Hernandez, Ed Quintero, and Judy Dunn. So, John, do you want to... Take over? As, as I said last week, uh, we started uh, a while back to change the justice courts. We had three justice courts and we uh, consolidated them all into one. And it was a huge shift and change for the staff, uh, moving to a new location from various locations around the county. And uh, it was a difficult task because they had to um, redo everything that they were doing before and start a whole new life. But they did it with, with uh, um, I don't know, they were happy all the time, but they, they did it in a way that uh, continued to, to help their customers all along the way. In fact, when they opened the new court, uh, the customers were treated so well that we got uh, much applause for the way they handled it. So we wanted to make sure that they understood how we appreciated the customer service that they gave us. So I have customer service award for these folks. Don't forget your microphone. Oh, my mic. <laughs> Can we get this court? Do you hear me? Uh, my name is Carmen Mejia. I'm the office manager for Justice Court. And Carmen was with us last week. <laughs> and uh, so uh, why don't uh, you three want to come up here and we'll. And uh, first here is Nancy Hernandez. And Ed Quintero. Thank you, Ed. These folks uh, really worked hard and are still working hard trying to make sure that the Justice Court continues to provide good customer service, and I think that's truly the case. So thank you all for the work you're doing in uh, this difficult time you've had. Thank you for taking the time off your busy schedule to present us with these awards. We appreciate them. Thank you very much. Get a picture. We appreciate what you're doing. Thank you so much. You well, and John, if I if I could add a couple mm -hmm. things to uh, last week when you when you were here, uh, when the other group was here, we talked a lot. John, you did about the work that had to happen to consolidate the two justice courts and how difficult that was and what a great job that you did to make that a seamless system. And then the other part was that Jen Zirnov talked about that the person that nominated them was, do you remember? Scott Otis, who is the county uh, mail carrier who goes to different departments and has the opportunity to uh, observe other departments and he's the one who nominated us. Right, and so he sees everybody and he came in and, and particularly acknowledged the justice court in terms of the customer service, the reception that he got. So I think it's important to make sure that we put that on the record twice. So. Scott is the one person we all see in every department around the county. Right. Thank you. You want to come up here?
Um, <laughs> Fun part of the job here is acknowledging great employees. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is public comment, and there is no one signed up for public comment uh, unless someone came in that didn't have a chance to sign up. It looks like nobody's jumping up, so we'll move into the consent calendar. And Madam Chair, maybe before we do that, um, on oh, action right. item, we need to remove an action item on the agenda today for further preparation. Under contract for review, I'll move that uh, we remove item number four, uh, considering approval for the sole source procurement issue until a later date. And I'll second it. Okay, so there's been a motion and a second to remove the last item mm -hmm. under action on our agenda. It's under contract review board and it's consider approval of the sole source procurement for $130,000 from Michael's, Michelle's pipe services for cast in place plastic lining services so all in favor of that motion say aye 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 it's removed and then we'll move okay. to the consent calendar under business services uh approve an order appointing colleen coons chaffins and jan fritz to the retirement plans committee under community services approve amendment number four to the oregon department of Education Early Learning Division Intergovernmental Agreement, reducing funds by $52,780.28 for fiscal year 24-15. The district attorney approved an intergovernmental agreement for $272,632 with the Oregon Devar Department of Human Services for Juvenile Dependency Proceedings. And under district attorney, approve an intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Department of Human Services for juvenile dependency proceedings for Title IV-E federal fund matching dollars of 225000 And under health, approve amendment number four, reinstating contract for services with Performance Health Technology, LTD, for processing medical services and adding an additional 25,000. Under health, approve amendment number 14 to the intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Health Authority for Public Health Emergency Preparedness, Ebola supplement number two, adding an additional $39,007. Under public works, receive hearings officer's decision denying administrative review, case number 15003 SAD, LLC clerk's file number 5695. And under public works, received Planning Commission's decision approving the subdivision adjustment case number 15 002 AJ development clerk's office file number 5696. And finally, under Sheriff's Office, approve a retroactive contract for services with Telmate LLC for inmate telephone and recording system services for $225,000. I'll second it. So we have a motion and a second. You notice we reserved the long list for you this week, so. It's okay, right. but you know, I'm still the new guy. Right. So any items that have, you have questions on? Or oh, comments? I just have been giggling a little. I ran into Rod Calkins heading out and he said he only had uh, consent items this morning, so he wasn't gonna stay to our meeting. And I just couldn't believe somebody wouldn't wanna just spend his time sitting here watching this, and I hate to let him get away, but I'm gonna prove it anyway. <laughs> so that's a second? Yes. All right, so we have a motion and a second, and we already had a second, right, to approve yeah. these items. Those in favor say aye. 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 And they are approved. Let's move to action. We have three items today. The first one is under Business Services Human Resources, and it's to consider recommendations from the 2015 County Compensation Board regarding compensation of elected officials. We have Jerry Bumgarner, and uh, he's the chair of the 2015 Compensation Board and Amy Rose Fish from Business Services. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. So we're here this morning, to, um, as you mentioned, for the Marion County Compensation Board. 
Under ORS 204.112, we are required to have a compensation board made of volunteers to review the compensation of elected officials. So we have that. We have five wonderful members that have volunteered their time with experience in um, compensation. Joshua Graves, Jason Herber, Derek Kernan, Marilyn Williams, and Jerry Bumgarner. On that board, we also adopt guidelines that you have in front of you and attached. And a couple items that we had this year <clears throat> that we wanted to point out is that last year, uh, the compensation board um, recommended and it was approved that the elected officials would receive any COLAs that were approved for non-represented. So therefore, a 3% was given last year and a 1.5% COLA was um, approved for this coming July. We have a couple, currently we are underway of a compensation study here at Marion County. And as part of that, there were two questions specifically related to elected officials that were deferred from that committee to the compensation board for consideration. And so those two considerations um, this year were one around longevity that should elected officials receive longevity pay for their length of service. And the other question was around um, how we do our market reviews and comparables. Historically, the compensation board has um, elected to adopt whatever process and comparables that the county does for consistency purposes. So we wanted to have them consider whether they would take any recommendations that came out of and were approved by the compensation study to be the comparables used and the methodology used for the um, compensation board moving forward. So those are the considerations that we had for the compensation board this year in addition to um, their traditional compensation review. So with that, I will pass it on to Jerry to go over the recommendations. Good morning. <clears throat> uh, first of all, the uh, pay increase recommendations from the compensation board for the elected officials, uh, there is, uh, we recommend a 3.54% increase for the assessor, 1.46% for the county clerk, 3.2% 3, 3 increase for the commissioners, 1.38% increase for the district attorney, a 2.54% increase for the sheriff, 1.69% for the treasurer, and no change in the current salary for the Justice of the Peace. Uh, these recommendations reflect the board's consideration of the current economic status and the comparable salaries of each elected position. Uh, the compensation board also moved to maintain the current practice on, on longevity pay for elected officials uh, and also moved to adopt the comparables and methodologies approved as part of the compensation study. The Compensation Board defers to the Budget Committee to determine what is most appropriate. All right, thank you. Well, let me just uh, first of all say that I had the opportunity to testify in front of the Compensation Board for the first time ever in my 13 years of being County Commissioner, and it was a very friendly group. I felt uh, welcomed, and they didn't hold me to a time limit, fortunately, <laughs> so I was able to get all of my thoughts out, but it, and uh, we had a, a nice showing. I think Sheriff was there, the District Attorney, Jan Zirinoff from the Justice Court, Bill Burgess. Do we have anyone else? I'm trying to... Nope, that, was that was it, right. <clears throat> um, as you've said, and as we know, we appoint the members of the Compensation Board, and they are people that have expertise in uh, human resources, <clears throat> personnel issues. Um, and um, in this particular instance, it was kind of an overlay of the work that the compensation study group had done, which uh, Amy Rose just referred to. So Jerry actually served on that group along with uh, a number of different representatives from the different departments, and I was able to chair that. We really haven't had much discussion as a board about it yet. The uh, I think we'll be doing a presentation. We're going to be talking about that later today before the Budget Committee to bring them up to speed on what was uh, proposed and the process we went through. Uh, but in terms of the recommendations on the comparables, what it looked like to me in this, because we are still, that's still at a recommendation phase, the board hasn't approved it, we went ahead and used the four counties that we've traditionally been using as comparables in this particular study. Is that right, Amy Rose? Correct. Right. So, what I learned from our um, study group that we had, the work group that we had, 
uh, because Gloria came and wrote a nice memo and gave us an overview, is that for strike prohibited uh, positions, so those would be in our public safety area, there was actually a court case, was it, or an herb case? It was a, st it's a statute. It was a statute and then there was an herb case around the statute and we selected four counties and they're the ones we can, we've seen, I've seen for the last 12 and a half years, which are Deschutes County, Jackson County, Lane County, and Clackamas County. So we've always just used those four counties. But in our group, what we learned is that we don't have to use those four counties for everyone else. And so we had some consultants that came from California, I think they are right, and have had a lot of experience and, and expertise in uh, personnel issues and, and they talked a lot around what you want to look for in terms of comparables and it's not just necessarily counties that are similar size but you're looking for proximity and so on. Now with elected officials it's a little bit of a different issue because you're not actually recruiting elected officials across county lines. We have to live in the county that we're at. So again it's that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, the other piece was that we made a recommendation in the uh, study group that instead of looking at plus or minus five as a policy, I think we said it's gonna be a methodology, and that actually our goal or our policy would be to try to make positions be as close to the market as possible. And in the past, when we've seen these recommendations, they're almost always as close as possible to minus 5%. <laughs> and there was a perception that everybody's that way. And in some instances, that's true. And in other instances, we found it wasn't true across the county. And we'll provide that information to you at the Budget Committee. But in this instance, it looks like you brought everyone pretty much up to market as opposed to minus 5% of market. Is that correct? So, so you kind of adopted that particular one in for this round, but the others will kind of roll forward at once they're approved to the next round. Right, and in the current um, practices actually for the board, it gave them the ability to do that. It actually mm -hmm. says the goal is to try to get to the mean. And so with a discussion around that mm -hmm. and the concerns around having a lot of longevity within our um, elected officials, but them choosing not to, uh, or to, to maintain the current practice of not giving longevity, they felt like getting them to the mean is more mm -hmm. appropriate approach so that's when they decided to bring them all to the mean. Thank you. So ha having that experience in that group really helped me understand a lot of what you did in this and so I appreciate that and, and appreciate the work that the compensation board does to come together and to listen to all the testimony and to make these decisions and bring them before us and this is a requirement by law that elected officials don't set their own salaries. We have a compensation board that makes those recommendations and then this would be recommended that we just accept this report today and then we will move it to the budget committee and then the budget committee will review it and then it will get depending on what their determination is will be adopted as part of the budget and then the budget rolls forward and I don't do we have that I don't think we talk about this at all after the the budget committee rolls forward right it's just Correct. integrated into the budget then if the budget committee adopts the recommendations so any other questions or comments? Well, you may have been talking about this, but I wasn't quite there, <laughs> you know, how precise I am. Um, on the sheriff, well, there's been some discussion that, that it was out of line, and I don't see a great big adjustment here, so I guess I should look at Amy's. And there were some extra rules there, if I understand it right, that they have to be more than his uh, under sheriffs, and that makes sense. So everything's square under these numbers for the sheriff. Correct. What, what we've chosen to, the board has chosen to do this round is actually right now the sheriff's office is looking at their entire um, chain of command right now in, in market review and because they haven't been looked at in a while. And so rather than trying to make a guesstimate of where it needed to be beyond the one point, um, was it 1.69? No. 2.54%, what they chose to do is we will assess once we get the numbers back and, and look at the new new results from their leadership, then we will, um, if it looks like it's out of market again, we will call the committee back together um, and work with them um, for a supplemental potentially down the road in a few months. But for now it is higher than the undersheriff, is that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, the, current, right. the current numbers will keep right. him above the undersheriff right. by statute. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? No? All right. So we well, have a motion to recommend this I, to the I will. budget uh, committee. Madam Chair, I'll move the recommendation that the County Compensation Board's recommendation to the Marion County Budget Committee for further review and consideration, at which time the County Compensation Board's recommendations 
shall not become effective and shall be a recommendation to the Marion County Budget Committee. I wish I would have thought of something a little easier to read. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's your motion. Do you have I'll a second? Second the motion to approve the recommendation. Okay, so we're going to ref we're going to accept the uh, compensation board's report and refer it to the budget committee for yep. further consideration. Thank you. Is that your motion? Yep. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 It is referred. Thank you very much Thank again you. for your work, for coming today. Finance, consider approval of the delegation of authority to the Chief Administrative Officer for Tenant Improvements to the Courthouse Square Complex. And we have Camber Schlag. And this one. Good morning, everyone. Okay. Um. We are here this morning to consider delegating certain authority to the Chief Administrative Officer for Tenant Improvements for the Courthouse Square Complex. Marion County and Salem Area Mass Transit District jointly own the Courthouse Square Complex and are members of the Courthouse Square Condominium Association for common areas and insurance purposes. The Marion County Chief Administrative Officer, John Latimer, is Marion County's appointed director on the Condominium Association with certain authority and responsibilities. We are requesting to delegate authority to ensure the timely performance of the county's responsibilities for tenant improvements to the courthouse square complex. This would issue approvals, provide notices, receive notices, issue directives, sign contracts, authorize change orders, and avoid and resolve disputes collectively with Salem Area Mass Transit's district authorized representative in relation to tenant improvements to the courthouse square complex. The Chief Administrative Officer, John Latimer, will apprise the Board of Commissioners of all actions taken and obtain direction from the Board of Commissioners when appropriate. So John, can we ask you, are there any specific tenant improvements that we're looking at right now? Is this- Yes, the there building, is. <laughs> the building is settled and we've got a few things that are in need of- <coughs> Actually, the building's fine. We have- uh, one little problem in the northeast corner of the um, underground garage with leaking water, but we'll get that fixed fairly soon. Uh, and uh, we had wind damage on the roof that we're going to uh, uh, take care of soon so that it doesn't leak. Okay. So we're looking at the roof and the garage then? Mm-hmm. Okay. And the roof was nothing to do with the remodel no. or rebuild? No, not at all. Well, it had to do with the fact that we didn't replace the roof during the remodel. No, we didn't. So it's the same old roof that we've had. It was wind damage to the roof. Yeah, long time. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for Camber or additional questions for John? So, Madam Chair, I'll uh, move that we approve uh, approval of a delegation of authority to the Chief Administrative Officer for Tenant Improvements to Courthouse Square Complex. Second. There's a motion and a second, and I'm reading through the order, and the delegation does say that the Board of Commissioners will be consulted and kept informed and all of that, which I know you always do, right, Mr. Latterman? I will certainly let you know every step of the way <laughs> what right. we're doing. Very good. All right, any further discussion? Those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And it is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Last item under information technology. Consider approval of a resolution establishing an IT governance committee and adopting a charter for the committee. It says Tom Fry, John Latimer. And, and I brought Julie Walton with me. Hello. Um, Hi. So good morning, commissioners, morning. Madam Chair. Um, Julie had a significant role in uh, producing the charter and working with Jan to get it here, so I wanted to bring her along and thank her. So. Um, Let's see, this morning I'm, I'm asking you to establish an IT governance committee and adopt a charter. Uh, the committee is a coalition of executive level, level leaders uh, that, is, that was started with the direction of the CIO, Mr. Latimer, uh, to make and manage IT investments and to ensure that IT resources are being used in the most efficient and effective uh, manner. Uh, said another way, um, they will help, help direct and answer these questions for the county. Are we doing the right things when it comes to IT investments? Are we doing them the right way? 
Are we getting them done well? And are we getting the benefits? Uh, the committee and uh, several sub subgroups supported by departmental staff will help the county with governance of risk, investments, projects, services, and information. On page four of the charter, you'll find the purpose uh, statement that talks about timely and cost-effective investments, <clears throat> support for evolving business needs and opportunities uh, for collaboration. Uh, these are all things that must happen in partnership to move the county businesses forward. Uh, I'm excited to have this group of leaders involved and in a room talking about new challenges that uh, technology has brought us and to help uh, solve their particular business issues. Uh, the, gr the group has been meeting informally for several months and is already showing results helping with the prioritization of CIP projects this year for the budgeting process. Uh, uh, recommendations to uh, that group. Um, the charter has been reviewed by that committee and encapsulates, and encapsulates the committee's goals and objectives. Um, with that, um, I wanted to ask John whether he had other things to add in terms of support for this committee. Uh, commissioners, <clears throat> we've tried this before, and I won't say it's been a dismal failure, but it hasn't worked very well in the past. Uh, but with Julie's help and Tom, we've, I think we've put together a group of department heads who are committed uh, to working on this. We had trouble getting department heads' attention before when we were doing governance, and they kept wanting to send other staff to the meetings. So I've gotten the commitment from the department heads to be uh, involved in each of the meetings, meetings of the governance committee. Uh, one of the, in addition to the other things you see in the charter on page four, one of the things that I wanted to make sure we were doing was having the departments understand that they do fit in a broader uh, system for IT that uh, they don't always come first. So they're going to help us make decisions about priorities. And uh, in making those decisions, you know, sometimes we have uh, major applications that have to be worked on uh, such as uh, the uh, sheriff's uh, lock and track system out at the jail, the DA's uh, system, and uh, those are big cost items that we have to work on. And so this group is going to help us set the priorities and the timing for doing those kinds of major projects as well as uh, making sure that all of the projects that IT works on, because it's not just these big projects that they work on, they have a day-to-day -day operation to keep the county uh, network and other systems uh, working and operating. So this is going to be really important for us to set the, the goals and the operations for IT to meet the needs of the departments uh, uh, across the county as an enterprise uh, effort. Yeah, I would chime in with that. John's really um, been supportive of the group and the group has um, been meeting and actually it's an enjoyable conversation about hard issues, whether it's digital records or whether it's uh, budgetary concerns, you know, there's not enough to go around. So. It's, it's been going well, and I think uh, long-term it'll be a huge um, uh, win for the county um, in terms of uh, uh, technology and, and investing it properly. So, Madam Chair, I think there's one other thing that I neglected to say. We are also using staff subcommittees, uh, particularly on Oracle issues, to report back to this group with recommendations on priorities and, and what should be done next. Yeah, in the past, some of the committees have been formed informally through other processes, and now we'll, we'll collect them up and put them under this, this formal governance group. Uh, there was a group that worked on uh, social media, and that was done through the board's office. There's also a group working on email retention policy and soon-to-be instant messaging 
uh, policy and process that will be drafted and brought in front of the board. So uh, something that we haven't had, as John said, uh, we've had it, but it's not been effective. And I don't think the board probably saw many results coming out of the group in the past. But uh, it's my commitment. I think John's commitment to get that done this time. So. Julie, do you want to add anything? Uh, just it's a very effective and positive working group uh, that's bringing a lot of synergy to looking at technology and its use uh, from an enterprise perspective across the county, uh, which helps us not only drive the larger projects, but balance the project and the operational work on an ongoing basis. We need that input. We need that partnership with those business areas. Uh, and we need those representatives uh, to speak for the needs of the department, to represent the, the needs as they fit into the county as a whole, and to help us take it forward in a practical and sustainable manner. Thank you. Yeah, I read through the charter last night, and I think what was the what popped out at me as probably the difference. So my experience was way back when I think 2003-4, when we had an IT governance group that I attended and was in this room, and I just remember it was just <laughs> not a fun experience. <laughs> We're sitting there going, when's this meeting going to be over? And uh, and I think part of that is the in-scope, out-of-scope part of it. So what is it's really important, as you were mentioning, Julie, to get uh, department input into what we're doing. And the enterprise approach is something that John has talked about for a, a long time. And uh, I know that you know, department by department, we've heard questions about, so what's in my allocated cost? What do I have to pay extra for? What, you know, what's a project? And, you know, and then we had these, what were, what were they called? They were agreements something agreements between each department and the oh, service you know, level agreement service yeah, level works. agreement. you know so we've gone through different iterations of different methods to try to get there uh, and that was more of a negotiated okay here's what you're going to get right and, and then we'll all sign a paper but there really wasn't any opportunity there for synergy across the various departments on issues that affect the enterprise so I but pulling the group together something's got to be different than what it was before and I think understanding that everyone in the room doesn't have to understand the underlying technology and you know i mean we don't need the 101 on how the internet works or right. you know where the servers are and how the wires are connected and all that more it's the high level issues that are affected by that technology and then it goes back and makes it happen and, and how that works you know that's your expertise and we're just grateful so uh so i think this is uh, this in scope out of scope idea and i'll just read what it's in here so if they're talking about use of social media the group might talk about the benefits of social media use the risks of its use the acceptable cases the tools the recommended policy practices procedures they wouldn't talk about the technical architecture they wouldn't talk about the tasks and assignments to implement the technical architecture so you've really spelled out and i'm assuming that you're doing that analysis for each issue that you bring forward to the group so that you're looking at what are those policy issues or what things impact the yes. uh, various departments that you can gain valuable insights from and then you go back and figure out how to make it work is that yes exactly Let's rendition focus on it? the what and we'll, we'll take care of the how exactly all right very good yes. and then the other part i think that we've and john's brought this up before too with, with regard to it is that I think in the past also there has been perhaps in the interest of providing good customer service, which we want to do, a department says, well, we need this, so then we'll just write a program for you. And then what we ended up with was kind of a hodgepodge of different things across the county that while it might have met a department's immediate needs, sort of then was contradictory to what the enterprise need might be. And so I'm hoping that mm -hmm. this, uh, or this group will help us kind of break through some of those and, and uh, set some standards maybe across the county so that people can get their needs met but maybe it's not in the method that they propose to i might propose to it initially mm -hmm. that there's again more analysis around yes. that exactly we're really looking for a, a cohesive sustainable scalable maintainable secure environment and mm -hmm. this governing this body will be very important to helping us set that up properly mm -hmm. very good Madam Chair, yes. there's one other thing, and I do want to thank Julie because she's really been the glue that's held this thing together and, and uh, helped put this charter together. Um, but when I first came here, one of the things that I saw, and Tom will remember this, 
I think back in 03, 04, when a particular department head didn't understand that uh, IT provides the technology, not the business. And this department head really wanted to get them to help drive the business. I mean, that was uh, because she was not able to define her business needs. So she was trying to get IT to define the business needs of the department. And we're trying not to let that happen. The business needs to know what their business is and how to run it. IT is there to help them implement it uh, with technology. And that's, that's changed, I think, a lot over the years. Uh, we've, we now have a much better uh, relationship between IT and business, and the businesses are, are really driving their own business rather than letting IT drive it. Yeah, that is key. For many years, uh, businesses allowed IT to come in and mm -hmm. understand and kind of drive how the systems were, the business process was inside the system. And um, I don't know that those days are over, but they're getting closer to being over. And I think we're getting better products mm -hmm. from that or right. by that. And some of that is simply conversation and probably coaching on your part to say, okay, you need to go back and figure out what it is that you need and then we'll help you it implement is. that as opposed okay. to saying, here's what you need to do. Yeah, we, we have a project management group that have uh, specialists that understand business analysis. And again, mm -hmm. part of that process is to prompt a customer and to work them through understanding their own business process, if, mm -hmm. if that's the correct way to say it. And so as part of that, there's buy-in and understanding or maybe just a realization that they know what their business process is inside the system. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, we help them through that. Okay. Thank so. you. Other comments, questions? This isn't really a major one, but I just, in making any decisions on IT, cost should be part of it. And I don't find a lot of reference to discussions on, you know, for example, a Cadillac might be a wonderful car, but can't afford it, but this will take care of it. You you do compare capital projects and stuff, but I just wonder if, or is that not even a function of this group? It, it will be as part of, um, as the group evolves, um, when people submit projects, there'll be more thought and work uh, to bring really uh, ROI discussions to the table, really understanding clearly the benefits of the project to the county as opposed to someone walking in with a proposal to buy X or Y. So um, as we evolve, that will be part of this. And as part of the project prioritization process, we've developed a checklist to gather information about the projects that are being proposed. And they deal with you know, risks, return on investment, uh, collaborative efforts across departments, uh, sustainability. Uh, Strategic alignment with county goals and objectives. Uh, replacement of, of old and aging obsolete hardware and software. Uh, that gives us a list then of projects that are being prioritized for recommendation to the budget committee. For those projects that are approved, the next step would be to take them through a formal options analysis process. So we can say these are the options of, as to how this uh, project could be taken forward. What are the benefits, the risks, the costs, the schedule implications, et cetera, of each one so that we can get to a greater level of detail. That. I'm sorry? Ease of operation for the user. Exactly. I'm thinking of that as a priority. Yes. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, yes. uh, you will also uh, hear more about this when uh, I make my budget presentation or Tom makes his uh, during the budget committee because we've utilized this in setting some priorities and you'll see them presented to the budget committee. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just am um, curious, I'm looking over the purpose and I, I think of um, the technology that that we have here, that I have here, that I'm not very good at using, and the opportunities for um, aligning um, our employees' training of how to use um, the technology. And is that something that I don't see a lot of that promoted or advertised through the communications that I get, Tom? Is that something that uh, you're going to try to do more of, or am I just missing it as a guy who's not paying attention to my email enough? No, I think 
I think we will. You're not missing it. Um, training hasn't really been a focus here at the county in terms of technology, and it needs to be one of the um, promoted activities through the IT governance, you know, funding for um, maybe a training position or uh, just funding resources in general. Because I would agree with you, a lot of people have technology in front of them, but are they efficient or effective with it? Can they get their work done? Um, you know, uh, are there training opportunities to just grow the employees uh, and staff to uh, become more than they currently are in terms of uh, their work? So um, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that that's covered well through the governance group. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good point because the, the software, the basic stuff we use here or that, mm. that I'm supposed to use that I don't, uh, is different than what most people are used to. And mm. so I know I've been here for, it'll be a year next week, and uh, there's never been a class offered or something that I've seen that says, here's how to use your whatever we call that system. Oh, email, like GroupWise or something? Yeah, the whole GroupWise system yeah. that's equivalent to Outlook or whatever. And I'm wondering, you know, in the training of our new people who are coming on board who may be using that on a daily basis, where are they getting that training and from who? Is it somebody sitting at their desk in their department or is it something that's more formalized, et cetera, to, yeah. to make sure we're, our learning curve and our productivity is, is as quickly as possible on that stuff? Yeah, I know we have some introductory training as part of NEO. Um, What's that, NEO? Uh, new employee new orientation. That's yeah. not Oh, which you yeah. went to. Yeah, that's right. going to be like a, an hour or less, right? Yeah, so, it's yeah. Pretty, pretty minimal. And then there's some online classes. But uh, to be honest, when we had formal training, they weren't well attended. So maybe that's something we can work on in terms of both the attendance and content so that we can become more efficient and effective. Better users of technology. Madam Finding out Chair. what people need. I know he's going to make some comment about it doesn't matter how much training yeah. you give me, it won't matter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh I'll, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut then, Commissioner. <laughs> no, what I was going to say was we used to have a training, a trainer, a training position. She left. I don't know whether she retired or she what, she but retired. she left. Anyway, and, uh, you know, during the recession, we just didn't fill that position back. But it may be time to to think about that again, or or just. And I'm thinking also uh, if we could get someone uh, like uh, Beth Hogg, for example, who would actually go around and talk to employees, and uh, and get them, help them understand what they don't know, and maybe help them improve. That, that's all I, I, I was going to just say was integrate that into part of my overall job description as I'm coming in to help somebody. The people that we have have been very good when mm -hmm. I request it, but there's not a, right. there's not, um, well, let me spend, let me come back and schedule an hour with you to go over some certain things that may help you. That kind of uh, mm -hmm. mentality and just the service and the training of, of the people that we, we have okay. on staff rather than hiring a full-time yeah, person. That is the best way to do it because when you're having a problem with something, yeah, you go to eight hours of training. Your email right? screwed up, and then it comes in and goes, "Okay, fixed it." And like, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh well. If best I, way to fix it is. I'm memorable. thinking of Teresa Dusen when I first showed up. She came in and said, "Here's how you turn it on. Here's your password. Have fun." So <laughs> <laughs> trial and error. That's that's kind of, that great. hasn't changed, yeah. Sam. Oh. I mean, I struggled. Yep. Right. Still do. But. Some staff have to want to learn, too. Oh. <laughs> what? What? Well, if they could fix my GroupWise app on my phone, I would be happy. So. What did he say? It's on film. You can watch uh, it. I'm not going to watch <laughs> it. I'll tell you later. Madam Chair, I think we better get going here again. So I would like to make a motion that we do approve a resolution that establishes the IT Governance Committee and adopts a charter for the committee. I'll second the motion. To a motion training. and a second to approve the resolution establishing the IT Governance Committee and its charter. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right, that's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, John. So that concludes our action items, and uh, I'll go ahead and read our Wednesday to Wednesday calendar. These are meetings between May 27th and June 3rd. Uh, where two or three commissioners will be present. 
We're just completing our board session here today on Wednesday, May 27th at Senator Hearing Room at Courthouse Square. This afternoon at 2.30, we'll be over at the CCTV studios at 575 Trade Street Southeast, taping Marion County today. And the topic is? We don't know where Bye -bye. it is. Oh, something in Kaiser it's probably. The big toy. Can you guys get that? That's, right. That is in Kaiser. It is, yeah. There's a boat ramp there, that's all I know. <laughs> right. Well, you'll learn a whole lot more today. Uh, Monday, uh, June the 1st at 8.30 is the Board of Commissioners calendar review. That's up in the Silverton Conference Room, fifth floor here at Courthouse Square, followed by management update at 9 a.m. And then Tuesday, June 2nd at 9.30, we start our budget committee. And that will be held here in the Senator Hearing Room uh, and I think we'll be, Mark, are we going to be taping that? Are you going to be recording that? Open the door and say yes. Yeah, okay. So that will also be live on CCTV or will it be, uh, as far as you know, okay. So, <laughs> so 9.30 on Tuesday and then Wednesday at 8.45 to 5. So it's going to be all day long for two days. And then we have a third meeting on Thursday uh, if necessary. But we're hoping to wrap it up in two full days. Uh, Tuesday at 4 o'clock is a meeting of the Jobs Council Insight Board and Workforce Board meeting. It's on everyone's calendars, but I have a feeling with the Budget Committee that would, um, are you planning to go to that? Uh, anyway, uh, it's at the Chemeketa Center for Business and Industry, 626 High Street, Northeast. Wednesday at noon is the Woodburn Marion County meeting, so we probably need someone to call and let them know that the commissioners aren't going to that as well. That's at Luis's Taqueria on Front Street in Woodburn. Wednesday at 2.30 is the Governor's Reentry Council meeting. That's also during the Budget Committee. Uh, that's held at the Department of Public Safety Standards and Training, Hall of Heroes, 4190 Almsville Highway Southeast. And those are the meetings. So a lot going on. Yeah, not as many meetings, Madam Chair, as normally, but um, a long Two days. several meetings together. Right. I'm looking forward to spending lots of time with you in the Budget Committee. Now that I've been here for a year. Yeah. Well, this was what yeah. you did, I think. My first day on the job. Right, exactly. Jumped committee into the budget day. committee, right? So, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> it was trial by fire. So I just wanted to talk about the big toy because I realized I hadn't talked about it here. And uh, we, I went to the Salem I'm, City Council meeting last night. I guess we. I haven't talked that. about it here at board session. Even if you had, you can. So do I'm going to hold again. this. Mark, this isn't for us. Can you can you hold this up? We're, we're I mean, in. can you see we're, this we're if I hold it up? I did it earlier. Okay, this is what we're going to be taping this afternoon. So we went to the Salem City Council last night and talked about this. There is a park in the north part of Kaiser uh, along Shamawa Road, just south of Shamawa Road uh, near the Willamette River. It's about 150 acres. It's called Kaiser Rapids Park. It's a regional park, which means that everyone in Marion County is invited to enjoy it. And they are building a playground that's going to be 15,000 square feet. Uh, it's a state-of-the-art playground uh, by Leathers and Associates and are helping as the consultants. It's going to be built with all volunteer labor and with uh, donations and grants from the community, from businesses, and from Marion County. And uh, the build is June 10th through 14th, so they're going to build it in five days. And they need about 700 people to do that. So I just wanted to get the word out. If people are interested in signing up to be a volunteer, it's at www.kaiserbigtoy.org. And we need everybody who can come. Uh, we need people to help actually construct. We need people to help with food serving and cleanup. We need people to help with child care and children's activities. And it's going to be a great event. So did you get it? All right. Great. Thanks. So that's my plug. I may not sign up, but I'm coming. I'm just going to Yeah, I've got it on my calendar. I haven't signed up yet either. But <laughs> oh, really? I'm going to go out and check out and see what's going on. So what else? Anything fun to talk about? Mm, yeah, lots. Had a good Memorial Day? Super. Caught some fish. Had a good time. Good? Yeah. It was it was a good weekend. And um, But yeah, uh, yes. Yesterday morning it was yesterday Tuesday yeah so yesterday first day back uh, eight o'clock in the morning we had a meeting with the uh, business org and IFA and I haven't had a chance to update the both of you uh, Barb and Tamara and I met with um, their director infrastructure financing authority 
And uh, they are very excited about the regional aspect of the canyon that we're working on um, and are going to try to help us put together um, a study on, nice. on the whole region right. and infrastructure and almost the question, if you build it, will they come or not? So that we can have a, um, as you and I found out in D.C., there's a lot of opportunity if we can, you know, take this from a regional approach. And um, so they're going to help us try to put that together. What that looks like, we don't know. But um, exciting that they heard about what we're trying to do. So, it, And then on Friday, we had the regional solutions team meeting, all the departments here. And uh, again, Tamara and I and, and Sarah were there. Uh, very good discussion. So, and, and even some individuals that were in that room the first time I met them up in the canyon um, at another meeting were not uh, how would I say this in a positive way? We're not really optimistic about us being able to achieve some thir certain mm -hmm. things. In fact, I kind of labeled them with staff as uh, downers. Um, we're <laughs> actually in this meeting positive and helping us be creative with solutions. So huh? it's really cool to see just our leadership and how it's kind of dragging some people along to say, hey, we, we can help you do this. some possibilities. It's, huh? Yeah, it's going to take us a long time, but... Um, and then yesterday I met with um, Ron Hayes and used that as an example. And, and also talked about um, when you look at uh, Salem Kaiser, uh, you know, and he re he's read that book. I've read it too, The um, Coming of the Job Wars. And I think when you look at Salem, we're uh, 132nd or something like that in the size of cities, the top 100s. How do you get to top 100? Because that's where you're really going to move the momentum forward. But when you take Salem Kaiser, the big toy, by the way, is in Kaiser. Just it is. In case you didn't but know that, but it's the regional part. That is that regional yeah. part. Right. It's the regional part. When you take that whole metro area, and what we have to do is figure out how does how do we start to lead that group as a as a region as well, like we're doing in the canyon, um, because then you start to move economic development in a po uh, even a more positive way and break down the barriers. This is Salem. This is what we're doing. This is Kaiser. What we're doing. And I, I mentioned your name as, as, as somebody who said, you know, because you told me stay at it, stay at it about getting somebody to participate. So there's some really good things happening. And, and you know, we're just looking for leadership to, to help continue to move that forward. So yeah. it's hard to put anything on the board right now as far as numbers and what we're going to move. But um, the, the principles are starting to really come together and I'm excited about what's happening. I think something's going to happen. I really yeah, do. It, and well, there are a lot of little things happening, especially right. in the canyon, the little ripple effect. Right. I'm going to be up there Monday uh, for the FLAP grant. They're, they're one of two people, which if they get that grant, that would give them the, the park and the day use area connection upgrade. Then, you know, Dan's applied for the park grant. So I'm sorry, Kevin, where is, where is this at? This is in Detroit. Okay. So they... They've applied, uh, the Forest Service led this, um, Danny up there led this grant. Um, <clears throat> so if they get that grant and they get the park grant, there's that's going on. Gates is getting their water system put in. So there's little things happening mm. up there, but just connecting all those dots right. and taking it to somebody that says, we want to invest and we want to see this region really uh, come up. So we got to have the, the study though. Yeah, no, I think that, but what I was saying it. is I think that sewer system is going to happen. And when it does, it's going to be so huge. So that's yeah, cool. and and you know, Sam, you described the, the build a pipe up and down the, and I I kind of went, I, you're not gonna, you, there's no way environmentally you're ever going to get a pipeline up that canyon. Maybe that's the design. Maybe it's not the design. We need to figure that out. But one thing that um, DEQ said, hey, there's a right of way all the way up and down mm, that canyon. That's why. Yeah, I thought yeah of exactly. It. You know, ODOT's got See? the right of way. He's smarter than we thought. <laughs> Not really, but thank you. But but the the feasibility of is it better to build with technology today, build these mini systems in in regions up the canyon, and then tie them all together in a regional plan. Just because I'm thinking of it, there's another way. You simply have each community could have a kind of a holding area, area and you literally truck it to the final process. And there's a lot with, of ways. And, but you make that part of the system with a backup and whatever. Right. 
and uh, and that takes care of everybody. Then you only need one processing facility. So just getting the numbers, the economic numbers of saying, if you build it, will they come? And, and they're yes. going to study the, they're, the other thing they're going to do in this is, is look at all the land that's available and what it could be used for and try to do the brownfields and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, our community services staff, and we talked about this yesterday, is really busy uh, with a lot of this. Mm -hmm. um, helping and there I can just see the excitement in their eyes of saying they can be part of yeah. helping move this forward so yeah, that's great yeah good job nice report I wish I had something like that to say I don't sure you do I'm busy I'm actually a 30 pounder <laughs> there you go but next week is a quick trip down to Roseburg and find out the latest on ONC stuff we should be seeing a check coming pretty quickly and not sure how much uh, but things look a little bit better on the downside. When I think of timber, there's already forest fire in Coos Bay and things. I'm just very concerned about the summer. Oh, and that reminds me, I see an article where another uh, Lane County was one drought declarations, but I'm not hearing any, any need to hear. So we want to listen for it and not wait. But uh, I'm not hearing of any particular problems other than we know of Detroit and recreation, but otherwise it's all right. But, uh, there's a lot less water than we had even last year, so I, I got to believe that we're just like Lane County and going to see those problems. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that low reservoir is going to affect ag and fish. It certainly we know the effect on recreation, it but this can't be good. But you know they got to have to draw it. They're, it's going down now. They have to draw it down. And I'm wondering how much water's in in the system at the end of um, the end of the summer. Well, they're gonna they're aware they have to ask us to do the declaration right and then we ask the state at detroit right. if you see them might remind but it's just they, they, we're not hearing oh, it that's from the other, anyone that's well, the other districts nobody said we, we have not heard of no problem shortages in marion county well and, and just the other positive thing up at up at the lake they, they're actually moving 200 docks up the Sandy Am arm, they've got permission from the Forest Service to do it. I was up there last week and saw the the, the first, uh, uh, what do you call it, Sam, when it's a, the long part of the dock they've got, and then they'll put the finger, fingers in. So they're actually, you know, being Time entrepreneurs up there yeah. and trying to do everything they can to tell people, hey, come on up and we're going to have docks for you. And um, it's still a big body of water, but yeah. I, I know the fish are going to be affected because of, they can't send the hot water over yeah. the top to cool to mix so about 15 years ago and it was nothing like i'm seeing now there was the sandy am was almost dry when you go across the uh at staten and uh i'm very afraid what that looks like now and i don't know how fish survive Lori, you look like you wanted to say something about but just be ready that we may if if there's i don't want to call it needlessly of course but if there's a need or it benefits the county i don't want to hesitate to consider so you've got all the Black briefcase ready to go. We're watching it, and we're going to talk about it this summer at our summer conference at the council's waters big topic. The only thing I was curious about earlier in the conversation: what kind of things are you building that people might get involved with? So, well, it's actually. Uh, it's like a mass production kind of thing. So it's the Leathers and Associates are the consultants. They've done 3,000 of these playgrounds. They did the Gilbert House. So they're going to go out and dig post holes all over the place, and they're going to put posts in, and then someone will, like, take wood and just, like, paint it or stick screws all around or whatever. So, But the different components, there's going to be swings, there's going to be slides, there's going to be adaptive equipment. There's a Salem Kaiser volcano slide where it's going to be like a volcano and there's going to be a mist thing that goes up and the volcano explodes and the kids will like slide between craters legs. There's a fire truck by Marion County Fire District sponsored by them that's going to have a mister. Uh, there's a log cabin and a castle. Uh, we had 3,400 kids that drew pictures of what they wanted, and there were enough kids that wanted a castle that they decided that they would do both, even though it's not like a fairy princess theme. It's more like a woodsy theme, but it's with the log cabin. It was kind of an idea that they had before that. Uh, there's a rock climbing wall. Um, there's a sm an area for tots and an area for older kids. So there's a lot of different components there, and uh, they're supposed to last for 50 years. They're made out of a most of them are made out of a plastic composite, not wood, so they won't be rotting and chipping. And that was the problem that they've had with some of the past equipment, that when it was made of wood, it didn't last. So this 
They've learned things as they've done this since the 70s, actually, that we saw their slideshow. That was pretty cool. Yeah, lots of fun things for kids. Definitely. I keep telling people, bring your kids, bring your grandkids, bring your neighbor's kids, bring all your kids. She asked me what there was at the Kaiser Big Toy that was fun, and so I answered her question. Where is that? In Kaiser. But it's a regional that's park. A, that's a newer regional park there. It is a regional park. It's not new. Can it's you been fish there, there for a while. Newer. Yeah. I don't know. Can you fish in the Willamette River? I think so. Can for a while. Yeah. All right. So anything yeah. else? Budget Looks committee. Looks like we're ready to go. Budget special. committee, right. So we'll adjourn. <laughs>